Mm. Wow, the moment you put it on your tongue, you feel the spice. Now, it may look like your Costco chickens, it does not taste like your Costco chickens. <laughs> Mmm, so silky smooth. It's like the breast meat too, so it's not dry at all. During my recent travels to the amazing city of Sydney, Australia, and the majestic islands and sounds of New Zealand, I had the pleasure of first spending a long stopover in Singapore, also known as a gateway to Asia and a country that holds a very special place in my heart. Join me in this video as I embark on a foodie-packed adventure through some of the most popular food destinations located throughout this beautiful island country that I once called home. Behind me has all kinds of different artwork and murals. Okay, so we just arrived to Singapore uh, after 17 hours on a Singapore Airlines flight. It was a bit long. Our arrival time was actually 6 a.m. We're actually gonna go head over to the Changi Jewel and try to find a lounge where we can get situated, put away our luggage, take a shower, get refreshed before we head out to the city when the sunlight comes out. We're getting some money exchanged because a lot of the places we intend to eat out here in Singapore when we go out to the city is gonna be mostly hawker centers and street foods. A lot of them, to my understanding, are still only taking cash, so we need to get some cash or U.S. currency. All right, so we just made our way into the heart of the city on the MRT. It actually took only about 30 minutes from Changi Airport into the exit uh, Tangjong Pagar, where we're headed right now, is actually going to walk about five minutes from the MRT station and find some traditional Singaporean breakfast and coffee, which is called Kaya Toast, which is one of my personal favorite. But we're heading there now. It's a new place we've never been to before. If you didn't know, I actually lived in Singapore for about three years. Uh, early in my career, um, I had an opportunity to relocate out here. I lived from here from 2013 to a good part of 2015, and it was like the best time of my life. So. This place is called Great Nanyang, and again, it's a place I've never been to before, but it seems to be pretty popular amongst locals. There's outdoor seating, and there's obviously indoor seating as well, depending on how much you can tolerate the humidity. I believe inside actually has air conditioning as well, and fans. They have a pretty complete menu set where you can actually order a bunch of Singaporean-style foods. There's uh, fried chicken dishes, some noodle dishes, but we're here just for the traditional coffee, the kaya toast with the soft-boiled egg. We're gonna actually hit up another spot for more meals later after we get our traditional Singaporean breakfast in. Which is the difference again? <laughs> so, Nanyang coffee, if you've never ordered before, there's so many different iterations that you can order depending on your personal preference. And I always forget how to order it. Like, there's Kopi, Kopi O, Kopi C, there's Yin Yang, so different styles where there's coffee mixed with tea, and we just have to kind of Google it to figure out which one it is that we want. Okay, so they just brought us our, our sets that we ordered. I actually just ordered one set with one extra coffee. And what it is, it's actually two soft-boiled eggs that you crack open into a bowl. You drizzle it with some soy sauce and some white pepper. And then the kaya toast is actually just two pieces of toast bread sandwiched with a big block of butter. And kaya spread itself is just a coconut jam. It's very sweet, sugary flavor. And you dip the kaya toast into the soft-boiled egg and then you take a bite into it. So that's what we're supposed to eat. The traditional way of eating it, there's no right or wrong way to do it, but that's the way you should be eating it. Mm. 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 That bread is very fluffy, it just kind of like evaporates in your mouth as you bite into it. Mm. The way they make the bread, it's like perfectly crispy. Very airy, fluffy and airy. I'm going for my Kopi C Siu Dai. Again, what that is is just a really heavy 
coffee mix with some evaporated milk and they make it less sweet. And it looks very, very rich, like on the top layer, it looks very like silky. Almost as if there's like a layer of oil or butter in it. Now, if you are transiting through Singapore and you find yourself having ample time, at least like five or six hours, you can definitely stay at the Changi Airport and there's plenty to do, right? At the airport itself, I mean, it's actually rated like, I believe, multiple years back to back, the number one airport in the world. There's a lot of stuff to do out there. There's plenty of stuff to eat. You can watch movies. There's a lot of time to kill. There's a shopping mall. Obviously, the Jewel itself is a shopping mall. I personally would recommend you come out into the heart of the city and just, whether you take one of those duck tours or you come out on your own, it's actually, really really worth it in my opinion and if you've been watching my videos on taiwan and korea i mentioned there's plenty of places to eat on every street alley and corner singapore if anything has just as much in such a small island you can again live here your entire life and there's there's so much to eat you'll just never never get through it all i already feel wired up from that coffee right now we're actually making our way to the next spot which is the Maxwell Hawker Center is a pretty popular hawker center amongst locals and um, expats and foreigners. Surprisingly, when I lived here for those years, I actually never made it out there, so it's going to be my first time going to Maxwell. There's other hawker centers scattered throughout Singapore that I, I would frequent, but always wanted to come to this one because they're pretty popular for one of their, one of the stalls has a pretty famous Singaporean chicken rice. I believe it's a Michelin guide street food rated place, and uh, we're actually going to try that today. Ironically, I only get to try it when I've left the country and come back here only as a tourist myself. So this area is called Duxton Hill. There's a lot of uh, bars and restaurants that you can visit and enjoy. A lot of really good food. It's quite popular with the expats, to be quite honest. So on Maxwell Road, next to the Maxwell MRT station is Maxwell Hawker Center. <laughs> there we go. Hello from Singapore! So like I said, I've never been here before and the name of the chicken rice place is called Tian Tian Hainanese Chicken Rice and it's very very popular um, and we were trying to get internet connection on our phones <laughs> and it was down so we were trying to figure out exactly where the stall was but it, we kind of gave up and we figured we'd just follow the crowds because typically at a spot that's very popular in Singapore you'll find a long queue or line of people waiting so Lo and behold, we found the place and we're now waiting in line for our Hainanese chicken rice. Quite excited. You excited? I, I we're hot. We're kind of sweating right now. <laughs> I think I had the humidity. Once, that shower that we took at the airport already is, is no good. It's all done already. So <laughs> it only, only lasted good for like 10 minutes. Oh, so we are next in line to order. What we're going to do is order two sets of chicken rice. One roasted, one steamed. So kind of get a, a taste of both different styles of chicken. All right, so we just got our food. Like I said, we ordered two sets of the chicken rice Hainanese style paired with eggs. And one of the dishes is gonna be the steamed Hainanese chicken. The other is the roasted. You'll be able to try both different types of chicken. Personally, my favorite is the roasted, but I'm gonna be curious to know how it's gonna be after we try it from this particular shop. So whenever you eat chicken rice, most of the shops that you order from anywhere in Singapore is gonna give it with this orange spicy chili sauce. And I personally really enjoy that. It gives it a sweet, tangy, spicy flavor. and. You know, I've never had it from here before. Usually what I'll do is I'll kind of just drench my entire chicken with it. All right, like I said, I'm gonna dig into the steamed version of the Hainanese chicken rice first. I'm just gonna try this without the chili sauce first, just to get a flavor of the chicken. Mmm. So silky smooth, it's like the breast meat too, so it's not dry at all. Mmm. Wow, that's really good. Let me try the rice itself. And this rice, what they do is actually they cook this in the chicken fat amongst many other ingredients, but it's what gives it the nice aroma and really good flavor. Now this rice doesn't actually taste like any just steamed rice that you're making at home. This has tons of flavor from all that chicken that they've been grazing and boiling in the broth for hours at a time. Mm. Very, very good balance with that chicken. All right, so the next piece, I'm gonna actually try some of this chicken with that sweet, tangy chili sauce here. Dip it in, there we go. There we go, get a good amount in there, drench that chicken. Mmm, wow, the moment you put it on your tongue, you feel the spice. It's actually quite spicy, yeah. yeah. 
Mm. Good thing I can handle spice. That's actually really spicy. Wow. Gotta be careful with that. Most of the time, whenever you order this chicken rice, it's actually a really good idea to just pair it with some of this uh, braised boiled egg itself. It's actually kind of boiled in like a soy sauce type broth that gives it that brown tint of the white egg white itself. That chicken. There we go. Uh, egg with rice or chicken with rice? Mm. This is a protein packed meal. So if you work out and you need your protein intake, come here, eat some of this good stuff. Doesn't have to be just from this shop. Anywhere in Singapore does serve chicken rice. It's very nationwide staple for Singaporeans. Now I want to dig into the, uh, the roasted. This is again, one of my most favorite styles of eating the chicken rice. So I'm just going to try it without any chili sauce to see how this tastes as well. Mm. Good. Mm. And the roasted version, they obviously leave the roasted skin on. On the steam version, they remove the skin. But the chicken on the steam version, like I said, is very, very silky, very, very smooth. When I lived out here, go down for lunch, I think I was eating this like four or five days a week <laughs> for my lunches. It was so affordable. Always got it the way it is with the roasted skin, the two eggs, a little bit of bok choy. Mm. Now, it may look like your Costco chickens, it does not taste like your Costco chickens. <laughs> Costco chicken, don't get me wrong, I eat it often too, it's very, very good, but this has a whole nother level of flavor to it. It's like Costco chicken flavor times three. Turn some of that chili, spicy chili. Mm. One of the common dishes you can order at these stalls, and most of them serve it, is gonna be some of these baby bok choys that they drizzle with some sesame sauce, some oyster sauce, and they top it with some fried shallots and garlic. Gives it a very, very good flavor. Very crispy still. They just blanch that bok choy for a little bit and they top it with all the seasonings like I mentioned. Very, very good. One of the things about hawker centers here in Singapore is uh, finding a table during the rush hour right now is lunch hour in Singapore on a Tuesday morning. And so um, in these busy hawker centers, you'll see locals, you'll see businessmen come here in their slacks and dress shirts. And finding an empty table is always gonna be a bit of a challenge. And sometimes if you do come here and you can't find an open table, you can just ask somebody that's maybe sitting at a table by themselves to see if it's okay to kind of pair up with them. Most of the times people just kind of mind their own business and they're okay with that. But you know, it doesn't hurt to ask, right? So we were lucky enough to be able to find a table right next to a refreshment shop. And the lady was really kind and we initially thought, we thought she was a customer, but she actually, she owns a stall and uh, she opened the table up for us and we're actually gonna buy a drink from her. So what we did is we ordered a sugar cane juice from her for 350 Singapore dollars. Here it is right here, the sugar cane juice. And they actually ask if you want lemon and the lemon gives it a really nice tart flavor to kind of pair with that really sweet sugary flavor from sugar canes itself. So I think it's a perfect combination. If you do order it, get it with the lemon. That's refreshing. We should order two, maybe order another one to go. <laughs> And actually, Maxwell is just within walking distance to Chinatown. We're making our way to Chinatown now for a pretty popular type of uh, Chinese dessert. It's called Kuai Go, And it's uh, more on the herbly side, so we're gonna go there and hit it up. One of the more popular places people typically will visit when they come to Singapore is Chinatown. And you can imagine Chinatown itself would be a pretty lively place. Right now, as we're visiting Singapore, and the recording of this video is actually around Chinese New Year, so it's gonna be actually a lot more lively as we make our way through. So we're gonna walk through it just to kind of see and share that experience with you guys. Jaime has all kinds of different artwork and murals that are kind of painted along the buildings as you walk through the pathway. Very, very cool. Whenever we make our way to Chinatown, one of the things we always try to hit up is this Chinatown Heritage Center. It's actually an amazing place. You want to come here and you'll learn about the Chinese immigration story to Singapore. The Chinese Singaporeans that actually immigrated from different parts of the world, how they ended up here, the life conditions that they lived in. And it's like a museum in itself. And inside, there's actually replications of what their living quarters and conditions were like back in the day. So 
Um, if you appreciate history and you like museums, this is definitely a place you should try to hit up. They seem to always be under renovation for some reason, so it's worth looking into to see if it's open for you to come check out when you come to, to Chinatown, Singapore. The dessert shop we made our way to within the outskirts of Chinatown is called Gonghei Guan, and they specialize in a variety of cold and hot traditional Chinese desserts, typically offering some form of a very popular herbal jelly called Guiling Go. Here's the menu. As you can see, there's various options depending on what sushi flavor preferences. What we're going to go for is this option here, like I said, with the Guiling Go and the Mango Sago. As you can see here, there's big chunks of mango with some sago or gel gelatin balls and then there's the big ice slushy with some boiling go, which is the dark stuff here. Mm. Mm. So like I said, a little bit bittery. You taste the sweetness from that condensed evaporated milk and then obviously the mangoes are quite sweet as well. Mm. Very refreshing on a hot day like this too. There actually is no sago balls in there. I thought there was, but... Mm. The mangoes are very, very fresh. Oops. All right, so that was a nice, refreshing little dessert. Quick little break as we continue to stroll around in Singapore in the 18 hours we have. We're about halfway through the day, and uh, right now we're just gonna stroll around out and about, make our way towards the very popular Marina Bay Sands area where the Merlion Park is, and just kind of soak in those breathtaking views that are very iconic to Singapore. And behind me here is the financial district. It's kind of like the Wall Street of Asia, if you will. So no trip to Singapore, if you've never been here before, is complete until you actually pay a visit to Marina Bay Sands. But obviously there's a lot more to the city than just Marina Bay Sands, right? Some of the places we've taken you to on this video today is more of the local spots, the hawker centers, the really good food that's unique to the locals. And just something very, very special in my opinion to this country. And uh, beyond the touristy stuff, you know, there's a lot more than what you see here. What people will do is they'll stand right here, kind of in a alignment with that water spout, and they'll stand here with their mouth open, and it's supposed to mimic the merlion shooting water into the mouth. When there's a lot of people here, it's actually quite comical. It's not too busy today, but I've been here when there's like swarms of people, and everybody's just standing there with their mouths wide open. <laughs> so it's definitely a sight to bring you some humor. Right now, I'm actually making my way away from Merlion Park and walking to the other side of the marina area. There's a bunch of buildings that are actually business buildings. There's, the whole area is called SunTech City. There's some hotels here. There's also two other buildings here that are very iconic that are kind of unique in terms of the way it's designed. The two buildings are actually called Esplanade and they're designed to resemble the durian fruit. So if you've never had durian before, if you've never seen it, it actually looks just like these two buildings. So one of the things we like to do whenever we come and stroll around the whole marina area specifically on the esplanade side is we like to stop at this coconut ice cream shop it's called coconut ink and they actually have some of the most refreshing coconut ice cream that's served to you in an actual coconut shell amongst many other options but that's our favorite so if you're ever coming here and you have time to stroll around especially with this heat in singapore it's a great way to kind of just uh, get some refreshing ice cream find a place on the steps here along the marina to uh, soak in the views of the water and the breeze very very cool Ah. All right, here you go, everybody. Coconut ice cream. Some of the best I've had on the planet. So if you haven't done it already, please do like my video and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue seeing our food and travel journey. We would really appreciate that. And this is just the beginning of our three-week trip to Asia Pacific. Okay, guys. Got to eat this before it melts. It's already starting to soften a little bit. Mmm. So refreshing. Thanks for holding it. Oh yeah, get some of those peanut shavings. Mm. Instantly cools you down on the inside. You can feel it, that coldness, that coolness just 
trickling down your esophagus and instantly radiating cold energy into your body in this heat. <laughs> mm, so soft. It's kind of like dissolves in your mouth. This young coconut is so good. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go for this big chunk here. It's going for the kill. Ooh, look at that, guys. Huge chunk of coconut shavings. Mm. <laughs> wow. That's good. Okay, so after having that refreshing coconut ice cream over at Marina Bay, we're now making our way to a more local area for a dish called bakute. And what bakute is, is actually a pork rib soup dish that's simmered and braised in the soup for hours. And the soup is actually comprised of various herbs and spices. So it's a very herbly type dish that's, in my opinion, great for curing hangovers. Okay, so we're making our way up to the establishment. I believe the way you say this restaurant's name is called Nung Asio Bakute. Now there's multiple places we go to. There's a legendary Bakute, which is really popular just down the street here. And then the one that we usually always go to is Songfa. But for this particular trip, we want to try something new. And uh, we hear great things about this place, so let's try it out. All right, so they bring in everything out all together at once. We order two bowls of rice. Those are braised peanuts, which pair very well. There's some bean curd, and uh, each person gets their own signature dish of bakute. Now they have different iterations of the bakute. They have a premium pork, which is gonna be more meaty and more tender, if you will. We went with just the basics. Whenever we eat these types of meals, we always like to pair it with some vegetables as well. And then on top of that, we actually also ordered another dish of pork liver, because they only give you a couple pieces of, of pork bone in your signature bakute. We also wanted to get a little bit more of the innards of the pork itself, of the pig itself, right? So we went with the pork liver. Mmm, good. Like candy, like peanut candy in a way. <laughs> mm, this dish here is like the braised bean curd. It's just tofu itself, so it comes in this heavy marinade. I think that's the same marinade as that peanut that we just tried. Mm. So the inside is very mushy like tofu. On the outer layer, the skin, they kind of uh, either they deep fried it for a few moments and it gives it a very skin-like texture when you bite into it. Mm. Mm. Oh wow, very herbly. You can taste the spices, you can taste a lot of white pepper. What I'm gonna do now is actually grab some of this uh, fried dough, these fried breadsticks here essentially and dip it into my broth. Mm. Mm. That's good. The bread soaks in all the flavor from that broth. So when you bite into it, all that seasoning and the flavor from that broth just like squishes in your mouth. Mm. And I'm gonna go for one of these big bones here. Let's see how tender it is. Mm. Not as tender as I thought it would be. Very, very flavorful though. Mm. A bit chewy, a bit tough actually. Mm. Oh yeah, that's very tender. It melts right off the bone. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that meat with all that gelatinous fat. Very good. Yeah, and it's also in all the flavor from the broth, like I said. So yeah, I wish they would just give more of those, but or if they're gonna give you those bigger pieces, they would actually braise it a little bit longer because the first one, I will say, is definitely very tough. Not sure if you're a fan of pig liver, uh, but if it's prepared very well, it should taste very, very clean. So let's see. Mmm, very clean. Yeah. Mm, okay. Very, very plain though in terms of taste. I think I got to dip in some spice. Mm. It's interesting when you actually chew through it and you swallow it. It leaves kind of like a trace of iron flavor in your mouth.
Nung A Sio is what the restaurant name is called and it's located on Rangoon Road in a very, very local area. About 10 minute walk from the little India bus stop that we got dropped off from. And so now we are making our way back to the next closest bus stop to take us to the airport. So we're gonna arrive a little bit early. It's been a pretty long and hot day. Uh, we need to shower before we hop on to our next flight over to Sydney, Australia. So we wanna give ourselves some ample time to make it to the airport and just kind of relax and not feel too rushed. By all means, if you have an 18 hour layover here in Singapore, you can definitely squeeze in another place or two. Uh, but for us, we just wanna make our way over to the airport and enjoy our time there. We have access to the lounge, so we're gonna take advantage of that. Whether you're traveling to Singapore during a long stopover or for an extended period of time, there are endless possibilities for you to choose from in deciding what to do and eat in this small island country. For me, it continues to be a place that I genuinely love and cherish and I always try to come back here at every possible opportunity. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel to continue following me on my food and travel adventures. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.